Joining us now to discuss this video and Asian American stereotypes, Clarence Lam is a Maryland state lawmaker and physician at Johns Hopkins University. From New York, Paul Chung is president of the Asian American Journalists Association and director of interactive and digital news production at the Associated Press. Christine Chen is founding and current executive director of Asian and Pacific Islander American Vote. And from Los Angeles, Karen Wong is vice president of programs and communications for Asian Americans Advancing Justice LA. Thanks to all of you for joining us. Clarence, here we are, 2016, Fox News, the biggest cable news network in the United States, a very influential network, and they broadcast something like this. What did you make of it? Personally, I was appalled and, and disgusted by the segment. It's really a disappointment to us as an Asian American community still see these stereotypes perpetuated in the mainstream media. And so, you know, with all the steps that we've been trying to make forward and move forward with as an Asian American community to be involved, uh, to take part in the election process, to participate in civic discourse, to see this really takes us a step back. And it's disappointing to myself, disappointing to so many in the community to see these types of stereotypes continue to be perpetuated. But I think it speaks to a broader problem that we see not only uh, within the, the you know, issues within uh, diversity in the media, also in the broader public discourse that we're seeing on the federal, state, and local levels. Christine, one of our digital producers here at CCTV, she went out to Chinatown here in Washington, D.C. to uh, get a flavor of what people were saying, and this is what she found. Let's take a look. What was, what was funny about that? Like, I, so someone doesn't speak English, like, that doesn't mean their issues don't matter. Um, we are, we're a country that's built on immigrants, right? Like, how have we forgot this narrative? Um, so, yeah, I didn't, I didn't think it was funny. I don't think, I don't, I don't know what the point was. Yeah, there's other ways to show the um, the value that Asian Americans can bring to America, other than uh, creating these little uh, weird narratives of uh, a very important part of American, you know, culture and history. So he was just kind of pulling, uh, you know, like the elderly to kind of make fun of what they were were or were not going to say. It wasn't very informational. So those are the folk out there on the street with their views. But what was your experience as a Chinese-American when you heard this uh, broadcast by Fox News? And looking more broadly, I mean, what is your experience at this type of racist stereotyping? Well, you know, we were outright um, shocked that this could actually happen in 2016, especially for the fact that, you know, Asian-American and Pacific Islanders are the fastest-growing population. And this election cycle is... Um, it's really going to be the point where we have the largest mobilization of Asian American voters. And so in this time in our history, we believe that our opinions and pulling information about Asian American Pacific Islanders are of value, especially since we can be a swing vote in places like in Virginia and Florida, Nevada and Ohio and Pennsylvania. And so um, I was pleasantly um, uh, it was really great to see that the Asian American Pacific Islander community mobilized immediately and that we have grown to where we have the infrastructure. We now have institutions like the Asian American Journalists Association to deal directly with uh, Fox News. We also have Asian American elected officials. And it was great to see that the New York community immediately came together to actually protest and to actually hold them accountable. And I know that ongoing discussions are going to be held. Well, of course, this uh, video, this report caused a lot of anger among many groups. Uh, the Asian American Journalists Association said it was outraged and shocked and demanded an apology. Paul, you are president of the association. How did you feel when you saw this? Well, when I see statements like that, it really question um, my Americanness. Right? I've been working at newsrooms like the Associated Press, the Wall Street Journal, and Miami Herald. Time and time again, when I see these type of coverage, it's basically telling us you know, that Asian Americans are not really Americans. We are the perpetual foreigners. And so one of the main mission of AAJA is to hold media accountable for how they portray Asian Americans. Are they doing it fairly and accurately? And when you think about this segment, you know, they portray it as news, but when you look at the content, is not news, right? It's borderline offensiveness. And, and you know, and, and it's these type of behavior and these type of segment we, we need to eliminate. It has no place in journalism. Right. Karen, Paul brings up an important point there, uh, what he describes as Americanness. You know, these videos tend to look at people in a different way. They try to alienate people. It's yet another example of stereotyping. 
we see this. It's rampant in other parts of the United States as well. What effect does this type of stereotyping have on you? And do you get the feeling that you are living in an America that's different from the America that white folk are living in? Great question. Um, you know, seeing that video really brings home that that point um, that Paul raised around always being treated as foreigners, as a community. It doesn't matter how long an individual or an entire um, ethnic group in the Asian American community has been here. We, were, we are always viewed as being foreign, and, and that has a real impact. I work at a civil rights organization, and we see the very real consequences when um, our community members are continually portrayed as foreign. Um, the conflation of China and Chinese Americans, right, um, uh, c continually happening during the political rhetoric right now by uh, mainstream news media. Um, any anger felt towards China, for example, is then redirected towards Chinese Americans and other Asian Americans. And that's a very real context that things like hate crimes happen in our country. Um, and we've seen a jump in hate crimes, in fact, against Chinese, for example, because of the kind of political rhetoric um, and these kinds of so-called jokes that are taking place. Clarence, uh, and I want to I, I yeah, want to add, you know, when, when they talk about these jokes, you know, it's not a recent thing, right? When you think about one of the unbroken thread in mm -hmm. U.S. history uh, um, with Asian American discrimination, is precisely that, right? When you're thinking going back to the Chinese Exclusion Act, to the Japanese internment camp, you know, mm -hmm. all of these jokes have led have serious consequences. And in more recent memory, when you think about the death of Vincent Chin, he was murdered because people presume he was a Japanese auto worker. And, you know, especially here in New York, when you think back about Private Danny Chen, you know, because of racial slur that resulted in his death. And this is not funny. You know, Clarence, this has riled many people, people in the media as well. We look at the satir satirical um, show, The Daily Show, which uh, has a bit more of a liberal bent, but this is how they responded to it. There was a bit of a scathing response. Let's watch. Was that? How was that on the news? In fact, how was that even on TV? Where the f did this come from? I mean, everyone's been wondering who'd be the target of 2016's worst racism. I didn't even know Asians were in the running. This might come as a surprise, but Chinese Americans do actually have genuine thoughts on this year's election. That's why I went to Chinatown to speak to people in a language they understood. Human.這是很特別,因為我們有一個觀念,就是美國有自己的本身的一個 you understand American politics enough to lodge a protest vote? Definitely. I'm from Queens. What are your thoughts on the Jesse Waters video on Fox News? The chicken reporter who came down here and thought he was big because he talked to people who couldn't speak English? Yeah, that bag piece of the one who was sent here by the larger chicken who couldn't come to Chinatown because he was afraid to do it himself? You the, mean that one? Yeah, that guy. The one with no test. The one who came down here who said, uh, let me talk to some old people and let me oh. let me put them on camera without asking them and yep. sort of put them on national television and made fun of them in the worst possible way. That okay, I think we're talking about the same guy. Right, right, right. What was the question again? I can't even remember. So, Clarence, to get back to the question that reporter posed right at the opening of that segment, uh, how can this be news? Clearly, it was not news at all. But here we have a country, the United States, which prides itself uh, on the diversity, on a you know, wide range of people who, who live in this country. Did it surprise you that Fox broadcast this? It doesn't entirely surprise me. I think, you know, the medium of television and of the mainstream media really has an opportunity to kind of broaden the public's perspective of different cultures and different heritages. And I think Fox has had a history and a record of running counter to that. Uh, this is really discouraging because, uh, you know, the executives knew that this potentially could be generating controversy. I think Bill O'Reilly, the host of the show, even said on air uh, immediately after it was aired that this could generate letters. Uh, so, you know, the executives at Fox News knew this was going to um, generate controversy, knew that 
there could be backlash to this, and they continue to air this type of material. And it really is incumbent on us as an Asian American community to come together, to organize, to speak out strongly against this so that uh, these networks know and uh, mainstream media outlets know that this type of behavior is unacceptable, that you know, it will hurt their ratings, it will hurt their business when advertisers pull out, when people turn uh, their eyes away from those channels. Uh, because we are really here in the US uh, uh, built on a culture of diversity, of inclusion, and having segments like this completely runs counter to those uh, core philosophies that we so hold dear. Go ahead. Uh, you know, it was also quite ironic that it would happen and come out this week because earlier this week, the National Asian American Survey came out with the largest in-language poll of Asian American voters. So there was actually fresh new content to talk about the role of Asian American voters and um, how they view this particular election and, and so that they could actually do a real news story on this. But they chose to actually take this racist route and uh, portray us in a stereotypical way. You know, as Clarence points out, generating controversy certainly, but did the folk at Fox News um, take a gamble and say, well, it may generate controversy, but it's also going to generate advertising dollars for us? I think this is where they are mistaking. Um, thinking about how the Asian American. I mean, here we have a network, and you know, I looked at some figures. The average age of the person that watches Fox News is over 68. I do not mean to disparage people who are over 68 um, at all, and predominantly white. Do you think they took the? They guessed that this is going to resonate with them. Well, also the, we, the reality is that they need to think forward because with this new millennial uh, generation that's coming up. Yeah. Um, they're already saying that Asian American Pacific Islanders' um, net worth in terms of buying power is over $825 billion and supposed to go over to $1.1 trillion in, um, in, in the upcoming years. So the reality is that if you're going to look at where the dollars are, you cannot disparage this community and ignore them. And in addition, it's not just the Asian American Pacific Islander community. It's also a broader community because it wasn't just uh, those of us who were outraged. I mean, the folks up in New York that protested, it was a broad coalition of those in New York that came together to voice their opinions on this. All right, Paul, of course, this has been making big news on CCTV as well. Uh, we've got quite a big response on our digital platforms. We received a range of responses on our message boards. Here's one of them. Uh, this is one viewer, uh, one person who listens to us, who said, I watched the segment and found it funny. My wife also thought it was funny. She is Han Chinese from Baoding. This is mainly an attack on Fox News by the politically correct crowd. Another response we had was, I think it was simply so unfunny that people didn't think it was supposed to be humor because the humor is pretty cliche, really. What do you make of that kind of response, people who say, well, it's really not a big deal? Well, you know, this is actually a very common question that we get every time we issue a statement when we try to hold media accountable for the coverage. And you know, when you think through about that is, what is the value of news? What is the principle of journalism, right? We're here to inform. We're here to inform an issue that's very complicated and to really shed light on something that we feel the audience know. And as a news segment, you have to ask, what, what value did it brought to the audience? What light did it shed to, you know, for the audience, for their audience to understand the complicated you know, issues between China and U.S. and also these elections. So I think, you know, when, when folks think about, you know, the, the particular segment and say, well, you know, it's meant to be humor, it wasn't. It's supposed to be informative. They are a news show, and it's not informative. I mean, when you think about what the reporter is doing, you know, I really do question where are the standards and ethics, right? Are they transparent with the people that they interview in terms of how they're approaching the format of the show. Do the people they interview even know how they're being portrayed, right? So if they don't, we're really talking about some serious bridges of this, the basic tenets of journalism. No, it certainly didn't inform us. It just reinforced prejudice, I guess. Karen, uh, if we look more broadly at the media in the United States, and I talk you know, in the broadest sense, the media from movies to television to radio to magazines and newspapers, uh, we don't have many Asian Americans who are represented here in popular culture in the United States. But mm -hmm. there is one place you will find them. That's the ABC comedy. It's a big popular comedy called Fresh Off the Boat about an Asian American family that live uh, in Florida. Uh, and it has an all Asian cast. Let's take a look at an excerpt from that. Come sit with us. 
Oh, what is this? It's Chinese food. Get it out of here. Ying Ming is eating worms. I need white people lunch. Is the U.S. media here perpetuating stereotypes, or are they poking fun at them? Are you asking about, yes. I'm sorry, you're asking about the, the, the news media? Uh, well, that particular segment there, which we saw from ABC, uh, that segment from Fresh Off the Boat. I'm sorry, I, I can't see the segment here in Los Angeles. Um, but, you know, on Fresh Off the Boat, I would say, you know, the contrast for me between um, having something like Fresh Off the Boat on television and then having sort of the ridiculousness that was the Waters World segment is that, you know, I think Fox took the lazy way out. I mean, that whole entire five minutes that they spent supposedly uh, interviewing Chinese in Chinatown in New York around political um, sentiment um, was all constructed around sort of a simplistic notion of what Asians or Chinese Americans are. And the thing I appreciate about some of the breakthroughs in diversity on um, network and other um, television platforms right now, like Fresh Off the Boat, is that it, prevent, it presents a much more nuanced and complex um, sense of who Asian Americans are, because that's exactly what we are. The Daily Show segment, I thought, was fascinating because, you know, when people are interviewed in their language, if English is not their first language, of course they have no comments. But, you know, these um, people being interviewed actually had very complicated, very complex um, political thoughts. And so I think that, you know, in general, I think that, that we are seeing a move towards an increase in diversity and a di diverse um, uh, kind of per uh, portrayal of communities like Asian Americans. But we certainly haven't gone far enough. But I do think that is the trend. I do think the Fox News segment really takes, you know, three or four or five giant steps backwards. Clarence, the uh, U.S. Congresswoman Judy Chu uh, released a statement on that video, and the statement mm -hmm. uh, reads, uh, as the fastest growing racial population in the United States and an increasingly influ influential voting bloc, Asian American and Pacific Islanders deserve better coverage than being the butt of a joke. Uh, when we hear that, what impact does being the butt of a joke have? I think it's really discouraging to those members of the Asian American community who really want to be a part of our political process. Um, you know, and it's really discouraging when you look at the broader picture of our political discourse these days is it the environment that we're in that's generating these controversies, that's generating ratings when people make controversial statements? And we really need to turn away from that. We as elected officials need to help elevate the discussion, help uh, bring people up so that we understand different cultures, different issues, uh, get the nuances of policies. Unfortunately, we live in an environment in a day and age where, uh, you know, facilitated a bit by the mainstream media, um, that everything is boiled down to sound bites and, uh, you know, a tweet. And, uh, you know, the elevated discourse is not rewarded. People are not provided the additional time to be able to speak um, about issues, to really understand the nuances, right. and to help, you know, incorporate people's uh, uh, thoughts and, and, and uh, actions into them. And, of course, it's very easy for people to write this off as saying, well, look, it's a joke, it's very funny, etc." That's a bit of a cop-out, isn't it? Because not everybody feels that way, especially the people who are the target of that joke. Right. It certainly uh, can be very um, offensive to those who uh, find it uh, discouraging and, and disappointing. And so, you know, I think it's one thing to have these types of uh, outlets, you know, on different medium that's not a news channel where people might be a little bit better prepared for uh, different humor. Uh, but I think in the end, this pushed the line too far. Uh, there's ways that you can be humorous and be funny. Uh, you know, I think Bill O'Reilly said that this was gentle fun. This is more than just gentle fun. This is really putting down a certain culture, making fun of people's heritage, and really going into someone's home, uh, Chinatown in New York City, and poking fun directly at the people who uh, live there. Christine, you've done a lot of work. Uh, I do want to push, yeah, go go ahead, push back a little bit about just framing the media as one giant you know, entity. I mean, there's a lot of responsible media out there that's really doing a lot of great story, that's putting a lot of context and nuances. So I just want to make sure that, you know, we, we, we put that out. And also one of the main mission of AHAA is to really educate our constituent, our members and our community, how they could better engage the media, right? Not just, you know, do the broadcast outlet, but also socially, you know, how do we engage reporters and editors in social medias to writing op-eds. And in fact, I 
encourage more people to write op-eds, you know, to really voice their opinion and their concern with this particular issue. This is how our voices is being heard. You know, Asian Americans in media is a small fraction. Right? But we have a bigger community, and it's really time for our community to voice up, just like the Setman say, you know, speak, speak. Well, we are speaking. You make a great point there about the media, uh, and we tend to fall into this trap sometimes of just talking about the media. It, of course, represents a wide range of views, opinions, attitudes. Paul, uh, looking at newsrooms in the United States, 17% uh, of traditional newsrooms uh, have people of color in them. Um, or at least people of color make up 17% of traditional newsrooms, 23% of digital-only newsrooms. So when we look at this is the source, this is where information comes from, what role does diversity play in newsrooms? Oh, yes, yeah, huge implications, right? When you think about the type of coverage, the reason why we see you know, more diverse coverage because some of the you know, editors and journalists of colors are really help shaping the narrative. And therefore, we need more people of colors to enter into the industry. And not only enter, but to really ascend to leadership role. And because the leaders are the one that will hold accountability. For example, in my day-to-day -day job, I do question about, you know, are we being fair and accurate? Are we quoting, are we getting the most diverse sources that we can on the same story? Are we going back to the same talking head because we're comfortable with them? How are we represent different views, not just across race, but religions and, and geographic diversity is also very important. Right, Christine, of course, uh, you've done a lot of work about attitudes and opinions and the views of people. This segment on Fox News was being touted as a political segment to find out the views of Chinese Americans on the two presidential candidates. What are their views? Are there any way of telling right now where they fall? So according to our polling that we had conducted earlier this spring, as well as the latest poll, um, actually Asian American Pacific Islander voters are leaning heavily toward the Democrats and for supporting um, Hillary Clinton. Typically, Asian American Pacific Islanders um, over half do not identify with the political party, but when they do, Democrats have a two to one advantage. But what we're seeing in 2016, that's actually shifting to the advantage of the Democrats. Republicans are losing out on their support and more are actually identifying as um, undecided or they're going toward the Democrats. Karen, here's a question. Do you think that the current political climate in the United States sort of makes it acceptable for these views to be made and for these views to be heard? I think it's a great question. Um, yes, I mean, I do think that over the last, I think, more than 12 months, um, you know, particularly around the ramping up of the presidential uh, race as early as last year, there has been uh, an increase in the sort of anti-China or the framing of China or Chinese or anything related to China as being an economic or other sort of enemy. And I think that that kind of messaging is extremely dangerous um, because it does create a climate where it becomes more acceptable um, for um, people to act out. And so, you know, in Los Angeles County, for example, there was just a new report released last week that looked at hate crimes, documented hate crimes in L.A. County, one of the most diverse counties in the country um, in 2015, and it did find a significant spike in the number of hate attacks targeting uh, people who are Chinese as well as Muslims. And, and we think that there's no, um, it's not a coincidence. There has been an uptick in anti-Muslim rhetoric. There has been an uptick around blaming China, um, both political and other rhetoric around blaming China. Um, there are these wrongful prosecutions of Chinese scientists that have been happening. Um, all of this is, is the context um, that's happening, and it does, I think, make people feel like it's okay to blame the Chinese or Chinese Americans. Um, so yes, I very much think that that rhetoric is, is responsible. 